If you're an intermediate Excel user, you probably already know how to use the SUMIF function to get the sum of cells within a range that meet a certain condition, a single condition. But if you want to pull out data from cells that meet multiple conditions, the SUMIFS function is what you'll need to use. So let's take a look at this worksheet, where we have a list of inventory items showing their expiration dates and the quantity in stock. The first thing to note is that I've already entered today's date at the top for reference. This will come in handy later. To the right of our data set, I've set up the criteria that our SUMIFS function will use to extract the information we want from our data set. So what do we want? Well, the first thing we want to know is how many expired items do we have in stock and what products are they? When we type equals SUMIFS and open parenthesis, the first argument required is the sum range. That is, where exactly will Excel find the numbers that you want it to add? That's the first obvious difference between some ifs and some if. In this case, the sum range is the first argument instead of the last. So right out the gate, we want to establish which range we'll be looking to get our total from. Our sum range will be our quantity in stock, column D. So let's highlight cells D6 to D19. And we want to make this an absolute range, so we hit F4. We type a comma to move on to the second argument. That's criteria range 1. Where will Excel search for the first set of values we're looking for? We'll look in the product column, that's B. B6 to B19. And this will be an absolute range too. We type a comma, and we need criteria 1. What are we looking for in column B? Our criteria 1 will be the product in cell G5. So these three arguments in the formula will get Excel to identify all the rows where the product column says beans, and then add the total we have in stock. So we're ready for our second condition. We type a comma, and we want to narrow this down to only the beans where the expiry date is earlier than today's date. So in what range of cells do we expect to find that criteria? It's column C, our expiry date column. This will be an absolute range too. We move on to our criteria too. The criteria for our second range is that we want to pull out the rows where the expiry date is earlier than today. For this, we type double quotes, less than double quotes, the ampersand symbol, and today's date, which was entered in cell B3. So we'll use the B3 reference and make that absolute. Now this formula is a bit on the longer side, but it's so useful and the logic is easy to follow. What's more, we can use the color codes in case we lose our place while building out the formula. Notice that the color of each argument matches its selection on our worksheet. The blue sum range matches the quantity and stock column, and the red criteria range one matches the product code selection, and so on. Let's close parentheses to get the result and hit enter. 74 of this product, beans, have already expired. Let's copy to the right. And now we have the totals for the other products. Now we also want to know which products will be expiring later than December 31st. Now as we saw before, multiple ranges within a function can get a bit clumsy and difficult to follow. We can cut down on this by naming our range, like this. Highlight a range that we'll be using frequently, and just type what we'd like to call it in the name box at the extreme left of the screen, just below our command menus. Let's call this range products. We hit enter, and then our expiry dates we highlight, and let's call this expiry. And finally, the quantity in stock, let's call this range quantity, and enter. So now we're ready to use our named range to find out how many items will be expiring after December 31st. We type equals, sum ifs, open parentheses, and we remember that our sum range is named quantity. Now we notice that when we start typing the word quantity, Excel makes a couple of suggestions about what it thinks we're trying to type. We see a range icon and a couple of function icons. We select the one we want by highlighting our selection 
and pressing the tab key on our keyboard. In this case, our quantity range is the first suggestion and it's already highlighted, so we just hit tab and type a comma. Our criteria range one will be our products range. We arrow down and tab to select. The criteria in that column should be G5 and comma. Criteria range two will be our expiry date range. So we type expiry, arrow down and tab to select. And the criteria for the expiry date column will be rows that show an expiry date greater than December 31st. So let's type double quotes and greater than. Here we can just type the date according to our regional setting. In my regional setting, December 31st is 12 slash 31 slash 2020. But this approach can be problematic because of the ambiguity that goes with date formats. So I recommend using the date function instead. Let's get rid of the explicit date reference, close these double quotes, then type ampersand date and open parenthesis for the date function. And Excel guides us by putting in bold the arguments that are required. So the year is 2020, comma, 12th month, 31st day, and that's the end of the date function. And now the end of our sum ifs function. So we close parentheses here and hit enter. No beans will expire after December 31st. Copy to the right. And we have the totals for the other products. So using named ranges within the sum ifs function does make it a lot easier to read and understand. The sum ifs function is super useful. It can accept up to 127 pairs of criteria, so you can really zero in on the data that you'd like to pull out of a really large worksheet if necessary. If you found this tutorial useful, subscribe to our channel or visit GoSkills.com. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.